range because, first of all, the Japanese are a very diverse culture. Very diverse. And there's, like in every culture, there's good people and bad people. There's good things and bad things. It's a mixed bag. You can't be talking about this people or that people as a whole people. Because what do you mean? The, the Shinto priest is bad. The Christians in Japan are bad. The various denominations. The pagans are bad. Well, what are you talking about? How is it any different than America? You know, you can't talk in those terms anymore. Because it misses the boat. Anyway, so this, 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 this level of understanding, this sort of prophecy smack level, you know, ends, you know, reveals a person not to be of Yahweh because Yahweh is not a racist. He doesn't take, you know, the Indians, all, they were slapped down because they were pagans. I've heard people do that. America, all of America is going to be slapped down and, and you know, um, let's see, throughout my lifetime and before, we've had World War I, World War II, Great Depression I, Great Depression II, Great Depression III, World War III on the Nye, wars, constant, perpetual. Uh, I can go back thousands of years like this. What are you talking about? You see, even the, the prophets of old, like Isaiah and Jeremiah and so forth, when they speak to us down through the ages, it's not about prophecies to come or even fulfilled prophecy. It's something else. And if people don't understand what that something else is, they have a long way to go before they can understand the spirit of God because it's got nothing to do with the time of Isaiah. I mean, it, I mean that's a part of it, but it's very it's minuscule. It has to do with what the Lord is showing you at that moment in time and why you would read that prophecy because it's got something to do with something else. Something else, but 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 then it has all to do with the con. It's both contextual and prophetic, not in the literal sense of the prophecy made. But that's you know that's too esoteric for most people. They want to, you know, they want to have the prophet du jour and have them say that you know there'll be an earthquake in Japan. There was one woman that got it, and she did it by by either by some form of measuring alignments of planets. And then realized, and she said that on March 11th, there would be a, a catastrophe earthquake like Chile. And she put out the warning big time for people that are on the coast to move away. You know, it could have hit in California. It could have hit in Japan. It could have hit anywhere. But that it was had to do with planetary alignments. And, you know, she was able to predict it. So that to me is a hell of a lot, you know, a heaven of a lot better than some would-be prophet that is just saying, yeah, Japan's going down because they're prideful people. It's funny, a lot of the Japanese I met, they're just, they're just people. They're, each one of them is a mixed bag like I'm a mixed bag. You know, they're, they're good, they're bad, they have, they have things they're working on, things where they fall short. They don't seem to be, um, you know, like they don't seem to be typical of an entire people. They all seem to be, to me, Japanese seem to be individuals. You know, I know in the culture there's been a big emphasis on, you know, uh, in Asian culture, there's more of an emphasis here and there on uh, filial, filial piety and, you know, ancestral uh, tradition and things like that. If you don't conform to the tradition, you know, and there's, a, you know, you, you should commit Harry Carey or whatever. You know, there is that on a certain level, but that's not all of Japanese culture. Sorry. And you can't just call them a prideful and willful people and therefore God struck them with an earthquake. That's just evil. Using that kind of terminology to describe God is just wrong. And it, it's, it fails to actually enlighten anyone about God. Enlightenment, remember, is enlightenment, meaning it's put in you. You don't put it there yourself. You do not achieve enlightenment. You see, I could t save the Buddhists a lot of time. That's an oxymoron. Because enlightenment in just the term itself means that, that, that it's something, a process that's done to you and in you and about you. And it has to do with a transformation process that, process that has nothing to do with your creation or uncreation or your, you know, it's beyond your will to control, um, it's not just an awakening of the mind, you know, it's, it is the, uh, translation of flesh to spirit is really what it is. 
and it's an enlightenment, like it's an it's it's an inculcation, it's an it's an inputting in you, and the Lord is not going to enlighten anyone that is um, believing that the material realm is uh, is it. Or believing that the sun is the, 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 you know, God or believing that, you know, in any kind of, you know, trying to make the material realm, the realm of, you know, like the witches do, they try to move things around in the material realm in order to affect spiritual results for the material realm in the end, which is, which is kind of like putting your head up your ass and expecting to be giving birth to a beautiful baby. You know, it, it just isn't, it's unbelievable how ignorant the witches are and how ignorant the Freemasons are, how ignorant the Rosicrucians are, how ignorant the, um, you know, the cult of uh, Pythagoras is, how ignorant Plato is, how ignorant um, all the philosophers have been, how they come up against a brick wall and they never go beyond it. They just don't get beyond it. Because, you know, and they even take Heisenberg into account and say, well, it's because we're trying to observe it that we're contaminating it. So it's, no, you're, 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 you've, you've got your head up your ass, okay? That's what you're doing. We don't. You know it when it happens to you. It's something that happens to you. I'm just simply announcing it's going to happen to you, so relax. But what about now? Well, it's happened to you already. What has happened? You were chosen. You came to this planet and this life and you chose God. And then he taught you that it was his bat and his ball and you're here at his pleasure. And you were taught all kinds of things. You saw all kinds of contradictions in the Bible and they tried to mind control and hold you back to stop your ascension. That's what they do in churches and temples and mosques to stop people from advancing spiritually. Because if you did, this would please God immensely, of course, because it's it's it represents like the growing of the fields. It represents the you know, the 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 the, 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 the harvest. Let me just use biblical examples now. Was Stephen enlightened? Oh, you bet he was. He was a ve complete vessel of light before the first stone hit him. And he had n almost nothing to do with this world. Thus, he had no pain. And it would kind of rob them of probably that more than anything else is what influenced Paul. I mean, that, that softened up Paul quite a bit, having witnessed that and even possibly caused it for his road to Damascus experience. I, I mean, you know, it's he he had to have had some that certainly would have affected him to, to, I mean, it would have affected everybody. The reason Jesus can forgive everyone while he's on the cross and being humiliated and whipped and flogged and all that is because he's not even really dealing with, this is not really even reality. Now the Gnostics understand this. You know, that the material realm is almost irrelevant. You know, that it's not, it's got nothing to do with it. It's like a, a stage play. You know, the props aren't real, folks. The the uh, the play is scripted, okay? It has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The lights are not the sun. They are not real. We live on the stage, and when we start believing it's real, we can't. we seem to want the play to end, but we can't get off the stage. I suppose when one wakes up and is enlightened, one ascends you know, up and out of the theater, proscenium, and up, you know, like like up by a rope, right? But it's an invisible rope that pulls them out of the play itself. Free to roam about the, the audience or the outside, or there's a whole world out there <clears throat> beyond this little proscenium arch, this little theater. There's an entire realm. And, and wouldn't you understand that the outside world, all that the world is out there, would not you would only get a very limited view if all you did was live on a uh, on a stage you know 50 by say 50 feet 100 feet by 50 feet or something big stage right you live in that's your world where you have you know millions and millions of miles of of other stuff that you don't know about 
And one would argue there's a lot more going on out there than there is on that little stage. Amen, brother, because that's exactly right. There's far more going on out beyond that stage than on the stage in terms of actual things going on. So one could not be bored if one left the stage. But you see, people are sitting there saying they got Jesus, but they're sitting there on the stage and they've moved in permanently. And they're asking Jesus to help them with their little hovel on the stage, that they don't sweep it away, that the janitor doesn't come and take it away, that the, that the play never ends, which is an insult to God, please. I mean, in every possible way, that's an insult to God. That's your basic Christian today. Anyway, it doesn't matter what your basic Christian is today because it's got nothing. There is no, uh, we are not to worry about the Christians. We are not to worry about, um, you know, the music world or the film world or the fashion or Charlie Sheen or, um, you know, the, the, uh, whether there's an earthquake machine, you know, um, picking off places like Japan and, and nuclear reactors. And we're not to worry about any of it. But we're not to worry about, say, you follow Yeshua, but you're not really a Christian, meaning a, like a cultural Christian. The other thing I was going to say about Japan is, you know, how do you know they're not godly there? They, they, all of them, all of the Japanese. <laughs> yeah, how do you explain diversity in culture like in America? Some are criminals, some are, are saints, right? Some are sinners, some are saints, some are, you know, whores, some are businessmen, whores. <laughs> I mean, no, but basically you, you have a diverse culture. Some are good, some are bad. You know, people are mixed bags and culture is a mixed bag. How can you just say they are a stiff-necked people? It's not like the Jews, but it's that kind of style of prophecy. I reject it now. I don't listen to it. And I reject, you know, if I said God's going to judge Japan with earthquakes 20 years ago, um, I'd be pretty safe in, in, in saying something like that, that earthquakes were going to come. If I said that about America, America's going to suffer a financial collapse. Well, I did, remember, for like three or four years. I warned, I told you to... to Protect yourselves, and some of you did, and you're very happy with me right now because I, that was prophetic back then, and then it happened. You see what I mean? It was said, not out of my own heart, not out of my own imagining. It was said, and then it occurred. Now I'm telling you, oh, but it's irrelevant because in the world to come, there are people doing quite well, thank you very much, and then there are people not doing well. In other words, the world life goes on. I'm going to go now, it's just so you know. And if this gets up, if this gets produced and published, you will be very blessed by this word because I just want to leave you with this one thought. And that is, you know, don't lose sight of the supernatural because that is what you're all about. That is what your God is all about, bringing you into the fold of the supernatural with brethren and family and so forth. And yes, the capable, let's not, it's not, you're still being humble if you talk about the capabilities. You're excited about walking through walls and going to and fro. All that's a part of it, but certainly you're not going to focus on that. But I mean, the fact is, yes, you'd be liberated from this physical chaining, this chaining to the earth and old age and death and all this stupid stuff. You will, yet God knows it's stupid stuff. He knows. He knows what there is. He knows what he's offering you, but he asked you to come through this world and overcome it. And you would be rewarded if you overcame it. So that means you are part of the equation. It's not a passive like, I got Jesus. I can turn my mind off now. I don't have to try. I got it all. Beep, 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 beep. Duh, you know, and then, oh, I'm so upset about my mortgage and my boss and my, and my diseases and my, and you know, I'm, I'm, 